In DC, for DC. DC Radio, 96.3 HD4 and dcradio.gov. All right, welcome to DC Radio. We're in the studio with an artist who needs no introduction. He's an He's a singer, he's a songwriter, award-winning songwriter, actor. Uh, he's performed with, uh, he's been on the, share the stage with Aretha Franklin, Alicia Keys, The Whispers, Rick James, Ohio Players, Al Green, you name it, Usher. Uh, he's worked with Sly Stone, Andre Crouch, Billy Preston, and uh, you may know him from his... Uh, Work as the lead singer of the group Tower of Power. His name is Lenny Williams, and he's in the studio with us today. Welcome, Lenny Williams. Yeah, glad to be here, yes. Or, or Dr. Lenny Williams. Yeah, Dr. Lenny Williams, right. <laughs> I've been called that a few times. You yes. know, I just found that out. I didn't I didn't, I, I didn't know about the doctorate. Yeah, somebody called me up and, uh, and said I was an accomplished uh, person, and... Uh, and president of the university wanted to honor me, and uh, so I put down the, the cap, cap and the gown and all there. that stuff. And uh, hey, and so made it official. Yeah, so I tell my wife, hey, uh, she called me Lenny. I said, no, you got to call me Dr. Lenny. Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but she doesn't do it. Yeah, right. Yeah. She's not. She's not listening to that. Not, not. Really. <laughs> yes, yeah. So, Lenny, thank you for uh, joining us today. You're in town for. Uh, a show at City Winery. Tonight? Yeah, this is my first time doing uh, City Winery, uh, and so it's going to be exciting. Looking forward to that. You know, we just got off the airplane and uh, caught an Uber and came right on over. Yeah, well, we, we appreciate you joining us today. Yes, I want to talk to uh, you about. I want to. I want to go back a little bit. Okay. Because we never have a chance to do this. You know, most of the time it's right. more, mostly a quick interview. But exactly, we have, yeah. we, because we have this platform, we're able to expand a little bit. So, and I've been reading. Um, things about you know we've met we've known each other for right. a while but yes. I've, I've been reading and I find I found some things that I didn't know so I would just kind of go go back a little bit for people who are you know that are just uh, finding out about Lenny Williams for the first time and for fans like myself that uh, thought we knew everything about Lenny okay we're yes. gonna go back a little bit and kind of go I hope for, I can remember all that stuff <laughs> yeah you might tell me some stuff that I forgot <laughs> yes right yeah so you came on the scene in like uh, the early. 70s or something like that? Well, actually, I started of you know getting involved with music uh, at a real young age, but uh, in this, I think I made my first record like in the late 60s, maybe like 69 or something like that. Uh, did a talent for the television. Well, actually, I did a talent show in um, in Oakland, uh, Don Barksdale. Uh, he was, uh, he owned KDIA radio. Right. And, uh, and he had a, he was the first African American to play on the U.S. Olympic basketball team, and uh, so he was a very enterprising guy. Owned a few clubs there in Oakland, and so he used to go down and do the talent shows while I was in college. And uh, eventually, you know, somebody from Fantasy Records came by, wondering if I wanted to make a record. So that's when I kind of started getting into it. Uh, and uh, did just, you start in? I mean, what what made you get go, go towards music? Was 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 it the two? Were you singing in the church or? Well, I used to sing in church, and then I was a teenage preacher, and uh, and then uh, I started hanging out with. Uh, I was going to college, and I was hanging out with Huey Newton and Bobby Seal, and they were, you know, talking about how you know Christianity. How can you, you know, right. serve the same God as the, the slave the slave master <laughs> and things like that? So then I, uh, you know, set the religion down, uh, and uh, but uh, I was like. I didn't set it down totally because I was thinking, well, if you don't use your gift, then God will take it away from you. So I said, well, I can't use it to preach anymore, <laughs> right. So, but I'm going to use it to sing. And so I just started uh, singing. And, uh, and uh, you know, so that's how I, I got into singing. So your was this, you had a song that came out on Fantasy in 1972. It was a John Fogarty of a Creedence, Creedence Clearwater tune. Yes, right. Uh huh. Yeah. Called Lisa's Gone. No, actually, Lisa's Gone was before that. John Fogarty wrote a, a song called uh, "Feeling Blue," uh, but Lisa's Gone was my first record that I ever made, which I wrote when I was about fourteen. And uh, but I was hanging out with John because he, you know, when I met John, he was working in the stock room at Fantasy Records. You know, trying he had a little group called the Gollywogs. Really. And uh, you know, trying to make it happen and. Boy, did he ever make it happen? Did, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's wow. like I, I met him in 
two years later, maybe two, three years later, uh, you know, they sold out the Oakland Auditorium. I was so, like, so what was the scene? I mean, that, what was the, the Bay Area scene during that time? Well, it was uh, it was exciting. You know, you had groups like the Whispers, the Ballads. You know, they were all hanging out there in San Francisco. Then you go over to Marin County of San Francisco. Then you'd be hanging out with the Grateful Dead or, you know. Right. Uh, it's like a you, melting pot over yeah, there. Yeah, right. Uh, or Carlos Santana or, or, you know, Sly. You know, Sly was on the radio. And, uh, you know, he had his band. And, you know, it was just... Uh, it was just music, you know, and a lot of venues to play and everything like that. And so I was just, I was just kind of like hanging out, really, you know, trying to get my feet wet, right. and uh, you know, trying to be careful because I had just kind of come out of the church, and then I'm right. next thing I know, I'm hanging out with people and they <laughs> smoking weed and right. other things, and I'm like, oh Lord, <laughs> what? I, I need to go back to the church house or something. Well, yeah. I noticed you work with Andre Crouch here. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, Andre, we all. Uh, well, I grew up in Baptist church until I was like a teenager, and then I got attracted to the Church of God in Christ. I said I'm kind of a mutt because my dad was Baptist. My mother kind of preferred, uh, you know, Church of God in Christ, Pentecostal church. My grandmother was uh, Methodist, so I was kind of like a mutt. And so uh, we'd sing, you know, I'd be singing with Ed and Walter and uh, Hawkins and Tremaine and them. They were Tremaine was real young, and then uh, you know so. You know, then started going to Los Angeles and hanging out with Andre Crouch and Sandra Crouch and right. Billy Preston and all of them. They had a group called the Kojics, which was a acronym for Church of God in Christ. And everybody played piano. And it's like it's kind of hard to imagine that Billy Preston could be in a group and some nights he never touched the piano. Really? Well, Andre played, Sandra played. Oh, right, right, right. Brenda Jones played. Yes, yeah, so everybody played. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And it's like the first one to the keyboard is, you know. Got, to, got a chance <laughs> yes, to play. Yes. Uh, yeah. Wow. And then, and then, then Bill, of course, Billy Preston went on to do. And the Beatles and the all Beatles kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so from from uh, that first record with uh, on Fantasy, then Tower of Power? How well, did then that what happen? happened? I did uh, two records on Fantasy and, you know, they didn't, you know, do very much. And then um, I started up. Uh, well, I did the record on Fantasy, at least it's gone, and then someone and did Feeling Blue, and, and uh, a, a girl that lived in the same apartment building that I lived in was like, well, when are you going to do a show? And I was like, well, I don't have a band. I don't know. I don't even know how you do that, right? right? And so she introduced me to the mailman who, on the side, was a record promoter and a manager. <laughs> and so he took me down to Fremont, California, which was a, uh, a suburb of Oakland, and uh, introduced me to a little band called the the Motown Soul Band, mm -hmm. and uh, so about three quarters of the band was you know eighteen or nineteen, and then you had about two or three members that were still in high school. So it's like, well, you know, can't even go to a club or whatever. Right. So it kind of passed on that. We we rehearsed a little bit and hung out together, and then fast forward, I uh, started hanging out with Larry Graham, and we were writing songs and. So then, about right, I forgot he was from yeah yeah yeah, yeah, from yeah. That area. And so um, I started hanging out with him, and so he's like, "Well, we got to put some horns, put some horns on this stuff." So then he said, "I'm gonna call this band Tower Power to come over." Mm -hmm. So when they come through the door, I said, "Oh, those are little dudes from the Motown Soul Band." Oh right. So we got reunited, uh -huh. and then I started writing for the band actually before I became the singer. Okay. And then they were having problems with their singer, and so uh, they were asked me to join the band, and then I went to rehearsal a couple of times, and then they had a show coming up, and they said, oh, we're going to kind of stick with this guy because we got the show coming up. And so then I left and went on the road with Sly and Larry and them for a year, and I took a leave of absence from my job or something. I don't know. Say my back was hurt. I don't know what I did. But anyway, <laughs> I didn't go to work for a year, right. and then it was time to go back to work, and just on a whim, I called Emilio Castillo, the leader of the band of Tower Power, to see what was going on. He's like, well, come over. We're working on a new album. So I went over, hung out all night. And, you know, he he didn't say anything about, you want to join the band or anything like that, or we having problems with the singer. And so I was like, well, I'm going back to work next week. And this whole music thing is in the rearview mirror. I'm through right. it. I got to, you know, go to work. And... Uh, Sure enough, the next day he called me. He's like, man, we still have problems with Rick. Uh, you know, you want to gig? I was like, yep. Yeah, but, you know, if, if I don't go to work Monday, I, I, you know, right, right. I, I've lost my job, right? Yeah, so I said, so it's got to be for real. So then first show we did was at Winterland in San Francisco for Bill Graham. And uh, Curtis Mayfield was the headliner. And uh, the Barquets opened the show. 
And I was like, oh, this is, you know, this is real. So I'm, I'm in, yeah. And you've been doing it ever since? You've been doing it ever since, yeah. Wow, wow. So from Tower of Power, and then uh, 1978. Mm -hmm. It was a big year for you. Yeah, 1978. Well, I was... Uh, I left Child Power, and uh, well, while I was with Child Power, I did an album that didn't really happen. And then I left Child Power and went to Motown, and I was working on my second album for Warner Brothers. Took it to Motown, and it didn't really happen. And so then I called Suzanne to pass, and um, she was up in Las Vegas with uh, Diana Ross. And, you know, when Diana Ross goes to Las Vegas, you know, Motown shuts down, they're buried, right. everybody go. Right. And I asked her if she would, uh, you know, uh, let me get out of the Motown uh, family. And I just said, I, I, I need to breathe and I just need, you know, so I left. And then I, Otis Smith, uh, who did... Uh, oh, uh, Beverly Glenn? Beverly uh, Glenn, Anita right. Baker's. Yeah, who did Anita Baker and Bobby Womack's big right. records, right. He uh, called me to come on over to ABC and then he hooked up with Frank Wilson, who was a Motown a producer, you know, that did uh, You Made Me So Very Happy and, okay. and Boogie Down Baby and Keep On Trucking and all that stuff. And so I went over there and uh, bam, uh, did the, the record uh, Choosing You and that sold 400 some thousand copies. And then we came back with, uh, uh, mit with uh, I can't think of the name of the album, A Spark of Love that had uh, Cause I Love You on it. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, oh boy, yeah, yeah. Uh, Cause I Love You, that song. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. That song is... Yeah. The song is yeah. like the it's like a whole mood all by itself. Yeah, and uh, to the degree that that it's 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 like a it was it was part of the the um, film mm -hmm. and the uh, tour of, uh, of the Kings of Comedy. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and a lot of people talk about the emotion that I put into that, but it was really weird because the day that I was recording that, uh, Frank Wilson said, uh, "Andre Andre Cross wanted to come by and, and you know check you out in the studio." So, and they said, "Well, you so." Em so much emotion. I said, yeah. I said, I'm in the studio and I'm looking out, you know, to the glass mm -hmm. and I'm looking right in Andre and Sandra's, uh, Sandra Crouch's face, you know what I mean? This, uh -huh. this guy's like, you know, the greatest gospel singer, you know, of his right. time. And, uh, you know, and uh, so I, it's like I had to dig, you know, dig deep and hit those notes. And you and, wrote that song? Yeah, me and a good friend of mine, uh, Michael Bennett, wrote that. Now, what yeah. were you thinking about when you wrote that song? Uh, you know, I and my wife is here, but you know how sometimes, you know. I'm not listening. Yes, yeah, right. You know, <laughs> can, can hurt your feelings. And, and so my friend Michael came over and was like, he wanted to, let's uh -huh. write today. And I was like, no, nah, I don't feel like it. And he's like, why? I said, uh, me and my, me and, me and the miss, we. we one of those had, days. Yeah, one right. of those, but, yeah, right. so I'm, He said, well, let's write about it. And so, bam, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And it, they had the, the intro, mm -hmm. is one, the, the lead up to, to right. the, 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 the to the song, because right, yeah. we have a we have a, uh, a several millennials, mm -hmm. young ladies who are here, and they were listening to it. It was like a whole <laughs> event when we were playing it last week because mm -hmm. they just just discovered it. Yeah, so it's a whole whole new generation has uh, is, is, is yes, it's just really it. interesting how that song just keeps on growing and 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 just. Uh, you know, just keep on maturing and, and, and just getting, you know, new listeners. I mean, sometimes I go to these shows, these festivals, and, you know, I see, you know, the grandmothers that All are my generations, age. All generations, right. And then their daughters and... And then they kids, and then the other, and they they know right. all the words because right. you know I, I don't remember all the words verbatim myself, you right. know. So they say, "Oh, you didn't say that part right there." <laughs> and it's been sampled too. I it's mean, been like sampled. it's been embraced. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, Kanye West uh, and Twista sampled it, and uh, it was just you know they did the song "Overnight Celebrity," right? And you know, uh, so that was that was awesome. And Scarface, Scarface sampled it. Sampled right it. Yeah, Jay Z, Jay Z used it. I mean, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Talib, Kweli, mm -hmm. and the Roots. I mean, yeah. Yeah. how does that feel to have your song uh, embraced by generations like that? I mean, it's awesome because it lets you know that you did something that uh, you know that people love and. You know, you just think, I mean, you know, even R. Kelly, you know, he, uh, you know, used part of it. Right. And, uh, you know, you say, wow, you know, and then, and then the other part of it is that, uh, you know, you, I mean, you feel appreciated artistically, you, right. know, you know, but then the other part of it is, you know, it's called the, the music business. So if you have your publishing and all that stuff like that, I remember uh, my wife called me one day and she was like, oh, you, you got uh, your, uh, something here from, 
you know, from BMI, she says, but it's different. Yeah, I said, what's different about it? She said, it's like the size of a <laughs> encyclopedia. Yeah, I was like, oh, really? <laughs> All these zeros. <laughs> yeah, right. So I ran home, and, and I just couldn't even believe the, you know, the amount of the check. You know, it was right. like, you know, and I had one check. I think I, I had, what, 94000 for writing the song, and then I had 94000 for being the publisher of the song. Right. And it's just really kind of interesting. And then people say, well, how did you how did you learn about publishing? It was just really weird. I was, spent the night at Larry Graham's house one night. We were in the studio, and Pete Moore from The Miracles was up, and he brought a bunch of people from L.A. And so I was uh, in one of the bedrooms. I, I just got tired and went and laid down. So I woke up about 5 in the morning, and uh, there was this lady over in the other bed, you know, and my first thought was, oh, I got to get to know her, you know, mm. like, you know, let's put these bears together, right? And that was before I met my lovely wife, right? Yeah. And so, uh, uh, and so uh, we started talking. Uh -huh. And she said, well, you're quite a singer. I was like, yeah. And she says, uh, and, and you write too? I said, yeah. And she says, do you have your own publishing? I says, publishing? I'm, I'm thinking it's like some big office on, right. you know, the avenues of America or something, you know, in New York. And she's like, oh, no, you could take $25 and go down, you know, to the county courthouse and get a fictitious business license. And she says, son, let me get your phone number. I'm going back to Los Angeles tomorrow, but I'll call you and I'll walk you through it. And, you know, that's how I got my publishing. You know, it's like, so I, I always tell uh, young guys, you know, when you meet women, don't always let the carnal Mm -hmm. thought go to your mind, you know, because, right. you know, uh, you, you know, these women are brilliant and, they, you know, they're doing big, you know, business and right. stuff like that, you know. Right. And so, uh, you know, so one night of carnal pleasure versus uh, one night of getting educated that caused me to, to a, yeah, caused me to make, you know, millions of dollars with my, uh, with with my your, songwriting with yeah, music, and yeah. publishing. Yeah. I mean, today's industry... You hear about these 360 deals that these mm -hmm. artists are signing with these record companies. What would you tell a young artist about handling their business? Well, I'll just say try to be as good as you can with whatever you're doing. You know, try to be the best you can be. And then, uh, you know, uh, just just get as much knowledge as you can about the about, about the, the music business. business, right? You know, just uh, you know, be be careful. Yeah. I mean, you're like a, you're like a soul. You're like a singer's singer. You're like a, a a, a soul singer, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, what do you think about the state of soul music today? Well, they got some good singers out there. Anthony Hamilton, yeah, uh, definitely. And then there, this, you know, uh, it, it really when Michael Jackson died, and then they uh, had the program. I think it was a award show, and then they had to just switch over and have different people singing his songs. And you saw guys like Trey Songs and Neo, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, that were influenced by him? Yeah, you know, and they, I mean, they were really singing, they, you yeah. know, they were, and I was like, wow, you know, I, I, I think that most of their records are, you know, kind of the style of the day where you, you know, you, you know, you just do, the, you know, what's happening. Right. But then when you see them, when I was seeing them just standing there, just singing songs, you know, songs that were made before they were even born. I said, wow, you know, uh, the state of soul music is alive, you know. Right. It's just that. Uh, uh, think it's in good hands? I, I think so, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, uh, you go to church on Sunday. And there it is. You know, there it is. I mean, I go go to church on Sunday and I get humbled. I'll be seeing right. these little 14, 15 year olds, you know, right. reaching way back and singing and doing all this kind of stuff. So I'm saying, you know, you know, they, it's there, definitely. There. And, the, yeah. and the music's embraced all over the world. Right, yeah. All over uh -huh. the world. You've been traveling all, all over the world yourself. Yeah, we've had been, uh, been fortunate to get a chance to go. Uh, we were over in South Africa a couple of times and, uh, you know, just over in Europe. You know, Europe and everything like that. Matter of fact, I got something on the email today to, uh, uh, supposed to be going to Portugal in, in May. Yeah, so you know, trying to. How, what's the What's the reception? I mean, how does it feel? What's the difference between the audiences overseas and the audiences here? Well, um, they it's, generally overseas. They really enlightened. They know the music. They, they they know things that I don't know. You know, it's like they know who played on the record. You know, mm -hmm. oh yeah, it's not, you know, it's like really. Or <laughs> sometimes. Uh, I get, you know, they want me to come, and then they'll say, well, these, this is the songs we want you to sing. Mm -hmm. And then I remember it was like, oh, no, you that song, I never did that song. Oh, yes, you did. And I said, no, 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 no. You know, 
I, I, I never did. That's not one of my songs. You got me confused with somebody else. Then I go to Google, and it's sure enough, I did that song. You know, it's right. like you know, so it's uh, it's just yeah, the the knowledge of the of the music is 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 uh, is amazing. And you've been doing some acting too. Yeah. Uh, you know, when they started, uh, you know, doing all these, uh, you know, black plays, mm -hmm. uh, guess what they first started out doing was they were getting, uh, you know, uh, uh, a couple of lead actors and then they would get, you know, local actors. Mm -hmm. And then after they did that for a while, they said, oh, we got to do something to get some more butts in the seat. So let's start getting singers, you get know. Some stars. Yeah, get some. Yeah, right. right. So then they call me and they give you just a minimal amount of lines, right? You know, mm -hmm. just a few lines. They just want you to sing the song. And so I did that and that was exciting. And then I did a play with David Talbert. And, uh, uh, you know, it was, you know, had some great uh, Deborah Cox and, and uh, Mel Jackson, actor. And so I, I went down and he gave me the script. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, okay, you're, this, is, this is who you're playing. This is your character. So I looked on the page and it was, had a, two or three lines. I so thought, this is, you know, this is cool. Yeah. Then I looked two or three lines. Then I looked one page, two pages, three pages, four pages, just me. I was like, oh, no, I, you know, I can't do it. I got, mm -hmm. you know, you got the wrong guy. Right. And then David Child was like, no, no, you can do it. I'm going to walk you through it. And uh, then that's when I realized I could really kind of act, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, I, I really caught the bug. And then um, I remember one time I was in a play and uh, they got me in a play. And um, I told them when I got in that I had already had a date. Mm -hmm. And I was out to miss a night. And so they were like, okay. And so then the date came up and they had forgotten about it. And I said, oh no, I gotta go. I gotta, I gotta show up in the Poconos. And they said, we gotta get somebody to replace you. So then they go and get, uh, God, I can't think of his name right now. They played Pinky in the... In, oh yeah, 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 yeah right, I know uh, that actor. Yeah, right, actor, yeah, right. I mean. Yeah, right, so he's played in all these, you know, great yeah. films, right? I mean, right. he's like, you know, played so, so many roles, right? So then I was thinking, oh, oh yeah. They had to go get him to take my place, right? right, right. And that's so I got my chest all stuck out. Then I got on the plane heading to the Poconos. I'm thinking, oh, Clifton Powell. Yeah, Clifton, Clifton Powell, Powell, right. So then right. I start thinking, my phone's going to ring, and they're going to tell me, hey, Lenny, nice knowing you, but, you know, <laughs> Clifton's right. got the role now, you know, because right. I'm just thinking, you know, so it went from me sticking my chest out and thinking oh, I'm, I'm big stuff because, you know, they had to get Clifton Powell to take my place. Right. And, then so I thinking, yeah, Clifton Powell is really gonna take your place, right? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, so I, I was telling Clifton about it. We fell out laughing and everything. So, yeah. is there some are more acting roles? I don't know. Um, Every now and then I get uh, you know people call me about it, um, but um, it, you know, it's kind of hard sometimes to 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 make uh, to. Um, oh, that's my watch. My wife bought me one of these watches for <laughs> I got, for I uh, for Christmas and. Uh, I don't know too much about it. Huh? I was telling a friend of mine the other day, I said, my wife bought me one of those Apple Watches for Christmas and uh, I wish she hadn't bought it because now I got one more thing to to, 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 to deal with. It's, right like, it's yeah. like we dreamed about this stuff when we were, when we were kids. Yeah, exactly. And right now, now here it is. Yeah, here it is, right. right yeah, right. yeah. so, uh, but, uh, yeah, so I get uh, offers all the time to do uh, do these uh, plays and uh and uh, I, I did a movie with uh, Vivica Fox, mm -hmm. and I actually uh, did. You do something with uh, something that was on HBO with Snoop. Yeah, I did something with uh, that was, uh, was music or something. Yeah, some some music that we, right. we wrote. Yeah, right. I had uh, gone to his house, and uh, he wanted me to write a song about his mom. Right, and uh, so uh, we wrote it. You know, so he's like, "Here's the music." Uh, uh, here's some paper and pencils. Was it a little know. cloudy in the, in, the, in the house? Yeah, it was, yeah, it was cloudy <laughs> in there, right. Yeah, yeah. So, um, But it was really interesting. You know, he was really nice. He's like, uh, you mind if I... I said, man, it's your house, you know? Right. You know go ahead on. You know, I don't, well, that's I'm respectful. Yeah, right, yeah. 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 And then one thing I admired about him was uh, we were in the studio, and he had all his boys hanging around and stuff, and something wasn't on, on the meter. It wasn't working right, you know? Right. And so... He gets down on the floor on his back and slides up under the console and mm -hmm. goes to the patch bay and starts and moving stuff himself. around. And I was like, man, you know, because he could have said, hey, one of his boys, hey, man, get, you know. Yeah. Right. And that, that really impressed me about him. Yeah, right. right. Uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, so I get offers, you know, to do, uh, well, I guess you just have to kind of figure it out, you know, uh, you know, what uh, what's worthwhile at the right. present moment because I don't want to 
drop, uh, you have a band and I don't want to just drop right. and, and go off and do something uh, with a movie or with a play and, uh, you know, then it ends and it kind of disrupts things. So, but if something really, you know, spectacular came along, I definitely would do it. Yeah. Uh, you have your own label. I do. Uh -huh. And uh, you got some new projects coming out, out mm -hmm. on your label? Yeah, I'm actually working. I was in the studio with Raphael Sadiq uh, here uh, a few weeks ago uh, in the studio with Levi Caesar, who is the... Uh, guitar player for Prince and the New Power Generation Band, and also my good friend D.O.A., who uh, is actually right now producing Kim's new album and uh, just did uh, Keith Sweat's last album and Joe's last album. So uh, working on some stuff with him. Matter of fact, he sent me a song uh, uh, a couple of days ago. Man, I got this hit for you, you know. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so just working on that and hopefully get it out soon. Yeah. Speaking of songs, we can't have the mm -hmm. Lenny Williams in the studio mm -hmm. without asking you to bless us with a song. Okay, we'll if, you don't, if you don't mind. Yeah, let's see if we can let's do something. If, can okay. we get something, Shane? And we can... Uh, get a little sip of H2O share here. Share with the yes, audience yes, a little right. bit. Uh -huh. This is stuff good for your voice right here. Okay. <clears throat> Ain't nothing I can say Nothing I can do I feel so bad Yeah I feel so blue I got to make it right For everyone concerned Even if it's me If it means it's on me was getting burned Cause I could never make you unhappy I couldn't do that girl Only wish I didn't love you so Makes it so very hard to go There we go Yes So very hard Seventy-three, yes, yeah. Oh man, yeah. I did that uh, in December of seventy-three, and at the end of uh, no December of seventy-two, mm -hmm. and then uh, January the thirty-first of uh, seventy-three, it was like You're number like one all over the place, right, everywhere, right? right yeah, right. it's like, oh man, this is my life in the change. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lenny, you 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 performing tonight? At uh, City Winery here yes. in Washington, D.C. What can the audience expect? Well, we're going to sing uh, some of Tower Power. We're going to sing some Lenny Williams. And we probably even do somebody else's songs, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, D.C. is a big hand dance uh, city, too. So, yes. you're, you know, that one tune you had... Um, Shoo Shoo Foo Foo Ooh. Shoo yeah. Foo Foo Ooh. Yes. Uh -huh. It's a big record here in DC. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We have to we'll go to Soundtrack. We're going to have to touch up on that one. Yes. <laughs> so the show starts at? At 7, I believe it seven is. 7 o'clock tonight. Yes, uh -huh. So yeah. City Winery, DC. Come on out. Experience the legend. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. In D.C., for D.C., D.C. Radio, 96.3 HD4, and dcradio.gov.